So, good day to you. <coughs> I'm just dropping a trailer here in DFDS in Birmingham. Well, look at that bush. Thing. Something I've been promising. And so here we are making it. Here's a review of the new Scania S series. This one I'm driving, as many of you will already know, is an S730. So, uh, top of the range jubby. I'm just going to do a nice straightforward, show you what it's all about, how it drives. I've been driving it for three weeks now, so I've got a good uh, idea of its ins and outs and these good points and bad points. And I'm going to, because I always, I get in any lorry I'm ever asked to drive with an open mind. And it's the only way to be, because if you go to something expecting to hate it, you will inevitably hate it. So I came to this with an open mind. I'm really lucky to have driven one so quickly, and a 730 as well so quickly. Um, this self-employed malarkey is working out alright. So, um, unfortunately, I keep, I've been waiting to do this video, because I want it to be clean. But it just keeps raining and raining and raining. So this has um, got lots of extras on it, the bars and stuff. One of the big... Uh, Selling points with these with Scania was the gaps have all been closed up and it's very aerodynamic and you can sort of get it actually it's very flat and square and while I'm still not entirely sold on the looks they are growing on me now I've been driving on uh, I do sort of like the proportions of it because I leave the boots on the top step I don't wear boots when I'm driving I wear slippers to keep the inside of the cab nice and clean it's the best way actually because all the dust in your cab comes from comes from your bloody feet and the footwell. So this is a tag axle, a twin wheel tag axle. It's also the first tag I've ever driven. It can be a bit jittery in the wet and stuff, but it's really uh, good the tag. It turns around on a sixpence, it's amazing. So it's just like I say, um, so the chassis and everything else looks pretty much the same. Obviously there's some new bits and pieces in there, but not much I know about. So we shall get into the machine. Whoa. Just polish up the bench. V8, never late in a V8. Ho oh, ho, yes indeed. So a quick thought on the uh, outside actually, these lights are a gimmick, they're absolutely useless. <laughs> if you try to uh, turn all the other main spotlights off at night, all these will do, will give you like an extra foot of light. Um, so a bit gimmicky they are, but they fill in the gap quite nicely. One of the first things you'll notice as you go to get in is four steps. One thing about Scania's is they were always quite low to the ground and I used to quite like that. Um, so you have to be careful when you get in four steps. I fell out on my ass the other day, properly on my ass, while I was cooking outside and there was a lorry driver watching me and I managed to keep my steak on the plate. <laughs> it was very painful. So, um, all this popped on. Down here we have uh, just the usual seat controls. Older scanners have these two as well. Uh, heated seat, that fan is fantastic. Never get a sweaty crevice. Nobody likes a sweaty crevice. I quite like, uh, I was dubious about this at first. Couldn't, so many controls being on the door. But it worked quite well. And it's been very wet more than once. So, because that's what everybody was saying. I hope they're waterproof and they are. So, uh, that's not a problem. That's one thing, and it's the first time I've ever seen with this actually. Every mirror is adjustable from here. Every one, even the curb one, look. See, and the uh, front one. So that's very good. I don't know whether that's exactly the same on the lower down models or. 
whether it's um dressed up back in the position now. Um it's a lovely seating position, comfortable, very comfortable seat. Armrests. Watch that was low. I'll have to shut that now. Very Roman reminds me of the Actros inside, same sort of dash layout and flat floor, which is a good thing because I really like Mercedes. It's a very good truck. Um, we've got all the climate control here, which is really good. You've got a um, little parking fan for when you're parked up. Don't think it's like what I call, but it just allows you to run your fans a little bit. And this all, they also has um, engine heater, look. So in the cold weather, you can get set that to come on and warm up your engine before you get going which is very, very nifty. It works fantastically as well, the temperature control in this lorry is, because Scania always were a little bit wobbly on temperature control, I found, found. Um, it's in these new design switches. So we got all these lights. These are the red ones down here. Those are red ones up top. Interior light, dimmer. Your spotlight by the driver's compartment. On off with the doors, um, weight transfer, and then down here we have the lifting axle, trailer lifting axle, horn, reversing beeper. And then down here, this is something Volvo did with one switch, but Scania have gone one better and done it with all the switches. Is um, all you can control all your suspension from this panel here. It still has the wander lead down there. Well, this is brilliant for hitching trailers and stuff up. Absolutely brilliant. Because you don't have to faff around that lead. And it works really, really well. This has got air on front and back. So, uh, yeah, that's a very good. Um, one little thing I don't like is this the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge. Looks like something out of a 70s and mm, Citroen. Um, and the stone ridge taco is still not the best in the world. I can't for the life of me work out how to get the tachograph information on the dash. Or indeed if you can. Um, so let's go and do a little bit of driving. Oh, here's some more controls. So if you use um, Siri and stuff or Google in the car, you can press that. This will mute the radio, obviously. And volume, blah, blah. That's for the controls there. And there's the back button. So this is speed. And cruise control. So just click that on. The one thing I really like about this actually is the um, cruise control. You can press that button even if you haven't been on it on this particular run. It'll just go up to the limiter and sit there. And it's got adaptive cruise control, which I'll show you shortly. And this is just the hill descent because Scania have fantastic retarders. You can set this to come downhill at any speed and it'll keep you there beautifully. And then we've got the usual lane control and. Um, Hill start and all that malarkey. You can also uh, make the dash go black at night. I dim it a lot. The infotainment, the infotainment center is a uh, premium one, so it's probably it's got dab as well, which is about bloody time. Um, and the speakers in the lorry are magnificent. Best truck sound system I've ever heard in this new Scania. Love it. Um, fantastic, and you've got mm, so that the red dab, dab and you've got all the usual ways of connecting SD cards, USB, um, aux, and he's got navigation as well. This particular one, I was going to mention something else. Well, this is good. Listen to this, this is like a luxury car, the door doesn't like do that tinny slam scan as used to do. Sounds like a top of the range BMW. So, um, right, I'm just gonna head on down the road. So something you'll find if you get to drive an S, and I imagine the R oh, series is very similar, is this is really, really thought out from a driver's perspective. They must have had a driver involved or lived in them themselves because um, it's just got so many features that like should be standard but most like power po power points there are power points everywhere usb ones like the here and here that plugs into the radio but it's also power power one there cigarette lighter socket down there 
three uh, two cigarette lighter sockets and power USB there. One up there for your coffee machine. And they've got them around the back here as well. Look. One there for bedtime. They've got them up top. PowerPoint's absolutely right. You're going to have to excuse all my junk. because I'm... You'll have to excuse a lot of junk because I'm just getting out of it shortly because uh, the driver's, the, the owner driver is back from his holidays. Went on holiday to France. It was very nice, apparently. So the bed is all in one piece. You don't have to make it like the old ones used to, but um, it slides out. Like, remember my 440 had to slide out bed? Comes out a long way too. It's very firm, and I like a firm bed. Wouldn't be to everybody's cup of tea, though. I wouldn't have thought. And it's a shame it's not got a flippy up end like the uh, like the Volvo does. Um, you've got all your normal controls there. Oh, hang on. What's that mean? Hmm. Hmm. So, yeah, power points. Oh, and that's the other thing that I really like. Down here, you've got the hammer for uh, when you're stuck in uh, a sinking lorry. But there's also an airline down there, look, with its own little bracket. Which is perfect. Such a great little feature. Nice and out the way, too. So yeah, let's do another view of the uh, interior. It's a lovely driving position. Like I say, higher up than Scania's of modern times. This is good. I nearly always drive with the uh, sun visors down because like, I get headaches otherwise. That's why I wear sunglasses so much because I get terrible headaches in bright sunshine. Uh, and this is quite good. Just a little cubby hole to put things in. We've got a bottle holder down there. Drawers, shallow drawer here, deep drawer here. Got a fridge, and at last, it's a decent size. The Scania fridges were terrible because they were those little shallow things, and then you couldn't fit anything in them, let alone a six pints of milk. That's got six pints of milk and a load of food in it. Um, has a timer on it, so when you stop the engine, it'll tell you how long it'll go for. You can have three different settings there, look. And then another drawer just there. There's a little table under Bertie that flips out, which is very nifty. Um, so that's it really. That is the uh, beautiful Scania S730. So that's it. That's um, our little look around the S730. Um, Yeah, I think I'm not a particular fan of any make. Some people called me a Volvo man, and before they used to call me a Scania man, and all that. And I'm not. The, people would take everything I say a bit too seriously. I just like winding people up. <laughs> I've never understood the the logic behind being a fanatic about one brand of truck. So when I being like that, I can say honestly that this is the best these are the best trucks on the road at the moment there's not a huge amount in it between these and the volvos but this is better than the volvo in my opinion and now if i was offered an s730 or a fh16 750 i'd take the s730 because it's just got the edge there the interior is nicer and it's more thought out don't get me wrong the the volvo is a beautiful truck and i'd love to drive love driving them again and stuff but I think Scania's got the edge now, personally. But then, like, it is five odd years since the FH was launched, wasn't it? So, uh, they'll be due an upgrade soon. A little bit of a update. But yeah, I've absolutely adored driving this lorry for three weeks, and I'm going to miss it. I will miss her indeed. I will miss her indeed. But that's it, I'm afraid. Good day to you.